Who or what is Zapatista? A fair question. The Zapatista Army of National Liberation, also sometimes called just Zapatistas, is a leftist anarchist native rebel army which is holding parts of the Chiapas region in Mexico since the 90s. I say leftist anarchist, but they wouldn't call themselves that. They are opposed to being politically classified, so from now on I will just call them Zapatista and describe them without applying labels which they wouldn't use themselves. Let's start off by having a look at the history of Mexico and of this region in particular. The modern history of Mexico begins when the Spanish arrive around the year 1500 and kill and enslave the natives that lived in this region for thousands of years. The natives were of course very diverse. As a matter of fact, in this region, the natives had formed full civilizations on par with European ones, coming with monarchies, huge cities and writing systems, plus calendars which ended in 2012. In the region we're talking about that was mostly the Maya and the Aztecs. Unfortunately, when the Spanish came along, almost all natives got European diseases which caused millions to die and the complicated government and economies to be disturbed by a lot. And it didn't help that the Spanish soldiers with gunpowder weapons came to loot the cities and conquer the natives for the Spanish crown. In this period, a lot of Spanish, aka white people, settled in Mexico. When Napoleon conquers Iberia, Spain loses the ability to hold its colonies and Mexico becomes an independent monarchy with an emperor and later a democracy with a total of one party. Nowadays Mexico has a democratic multi-party system. Let's now look at the region of Chiapas in particular. This is it. I know it looks small, I certainly thought it was, but that's just because Mexico is fuck off huge. Chiapas actually has the area of Czechoslovakia and the population of Denmark, so it's not nothing. According to the 2005 census, there are 4 million people in Chiapas, 3 million of which have indigenous ancestry, meaning there are some forms of not white, about a million of those speak an indigenous language, and one third of those do not speak Spanish, so they only speak the native language. 99% of the municipalities that make up Chiapas have majority indigenous populations, kind of to be expected looking at these numbers. Economically, this area was never really rich, most land belonged to small-scale farms like coffee farmers. There are lots of resources, but the people didn't profit from that. The national government and capitalists did. The region is rather left-leaning, with many people being part of unions and opposing neoliberal policy. The reason is that despite Mexico being an economically liberal nation since World War II, the standards of living in Chiapas is still as bad and all the market did was hurt local farmers and give profits to rich people. Interestingly, there is a tradition of the Mexican government deciding to do something that fucks over the indigenous population which is why there have been multiple armed uprisings in these regions, like the Chamula uh, Rebellion and the Pajarito War. Remember, at this time Mexico was no democracy, so the only way to get rights and representation was war. By the 70s Mexico was a democracy w with one party, and that party was neoliberal and did neoliberal things like privatizing and fucking over socialists. Naturally, the people didn't enjoy that, so they formed and joined militias that advocated for their rights. This was, of course, because fighting was the only way to make your voice heard without democracy, free press and freedom of speech. Rebel groups sprang up all around the country, sometimes fighting with the Mexican military, sometimes dissolving and sometimes new ones forming. Such happened in 1983 when the Zapatista Army of National Liberation was formed. They got the name from a Mexican revolutionary named Emiliano Zapata. The ideology is called neo sapismo More about that in the ideology section. They originally worked with non-violent resistance, like marches and sit-ins, but this didn't change anything. The Zapatistas don't consider the Mexican government legitimate, so eventually, 11 years after it was formed, they declared a de facto war on Mexico. The trigger was economic reform which made it impossible for poor people to obtain land 
along with the ratification of NAFTA. They wanted people to rise up all over Mexico to overthrow the neoliberal government, but this didn't happen. They didn't want independence, instead they wanted a new democratic federal government, as well as protections for indigenous rights and use of the resources from Chiapas in Chiapas itself. They initially had success seizing multiple towns and villages, but within a year the Mexican government started a counter-offensive. After taking heavy casualties, the uh, Zapatistas abandoned the village and moved to the jungle. There was a stalemate for a few years and eventually they negotiated for peace with the Mexican government. The Mexican government would remove its troops from Chiapas, de facto allowing the Zapatistas to take over the region. They formed autonomous municipalities, wrote constitution and gave the people the right to vote on their own local government. Since then there has been a stalemate. Neither side wants to restart the fighting, so they're just kind of sitting there, watching each other. Mexico considers the Zapatistas to be rebels, and the Zapatistas consider the Mexican government to be oppressive and illegitimate. Despite this, they are in open negotiations on lots of issues. Since the 2000s, the Zapatistas have been looking outward, supporting revolutionary action in other countries, and doing things like the 2007 intercontinental indigenous encounter, which was an organization for all natives of the world to unite them in their struggles. Also they support Palestine over Israel. Zapatista is organizing in a decentral way. The counties, which are parts of the area controlled by the army, all have equal rights. They practice horizontal autonomy as well as mutual aid between each other. The Zapatista army has no say in how these counties are run. Instead, the territories are run by popular assemblies. An assembly is made up of around 300 families, and anyone over the age of 12 can take part in the decision-making process. The assemblies try to always reach a consensus, but when that's impossible, a majority vote has to do. The communities form a federation with other communities to create a municipality. Municipalities form further federations with other municipalities to create a region. The Zapatista control areas are comprised of five regions. There isn't really any central governance to these communities, which is by design, anarchist ideas and all. The economy in the Zapatista control areas is mostly made up of local agricultural production. There are larger businesses which are run as cooperatives. That means the workers democratically control the workplace. There still are some family farms and privately run stores, but the Zapatistas encourage co-ops. They also abolish private property. That means nobody can own land, but there is still property called personal property. The distinction is too philosophical for this video. Overall, for Mexican standards, the Zapatista controlled areas are remarkably peaceful and prosperous. In the education system the Zapatistas built up, the curriculum is created by the community the school is in and the teachers. They also don't grade students. They teach them, but no tests. School is also free for everyone to encourage people to get educated. The healthcare system in the Zapatista controlled areas is really good compared to the rest of Mexico. Essentially everyone gets free treatment, except for medication for which you have to pay, so you can afford to restock. The healthcare facilities also take people who are from non-Zapatista communities. Since taking power, the Zapatistas built two hospitals and 18 health clinics in the areas they control. These hospitals and clinics are known to be less racist towards indigenous people than healthcare providers in government control regions. Here are some of the achievements of the healthcare system under the Zapatistas. As you can see here, there are good things here like vaccinations, help for pregnant people, toilets, no tuberculosis, lower death rate from childbirth and so on. And yes, as you can see, they did completely ban alcohol, which from a medical standpoint I understand, but as a full-time alcoholic I have to say I need my alcohol so I don't support that ban. Naturally, the Zapatistas have been exposed to criticism from a lot of different people over the past 30 years. An anarchist objection is that the Zapatistas successfully created many worker cooperatives, but they did not take enough steps to abolish wage labor and the renting of property, which isn't great from a leftist perspective. A more authoritarian leftist critique is that the Zapatista army isn't spreading the revolution. 
they are in charge of an area. Why don't they just expand and help more working people across Mexico and Latin America? The Zapatistas only control about 300,000 people. Considering they're doing well in this area, why not expand? This criticism makes sense if you think of the Zapatistas like of a Bolshevik party, a temporary ruling class. But the Zapatistas don't rule and they aren't a separate class, depending on your definition. While I understand the desire to have a revolution spread, I think the reason they didn't expand their area of operation was because they would get defeated. When they took their first and only military action in 1994, they were in full-scale retreat within three days. The only reason they're still around is because the Mexican government pulled out the troops, presumably because they didn't want a guerrilla war. The Zapatistas don't take any military action anymore. They instead advocate for peaceful political change, both in the regions they control and other regions of Mexico. In conclusion, the Zapatista are a group of armed rebels which, despite being beaten militarily, still holds lots of land in this region of Mexico. They are both broadly socialist when it comes to their policies, but they do not have a central government like most attempts at socialism. You could call them anarchist, but they themselves accept no political label. And the only reason they still exist is because the Mexican government would look pretty bad if their army had invaded and killed the mostly indigenous members of the Zapatista army. Thanks for watching.